In this video, we'll look at adding wall framing macros. Wall framing macros allow us to specify certain details and assemblies at specific locations on a wall. The macros themselves are graphical elements that are added to walls within the 2D floor plan. The specified details and assemblies are then automatically framed into the wall panel drawings. Although not imperative, the panel macros are typically added to the walls before the walls are divided into separate panels, or in other words, before the walls are panelized. The function for adding wall panel macros is located within the Ribbon Bar's Classic Wall Framing tab under Panel Macros. Selecting the function shows the list of wall panel macros. It won't be necessary to go through every one on the list because the example processes that we do go through will apply to the rest as well. Let's focus on the framing macros needed for our Demo 1 project. First, let's place the beam pocket. So from the Macro menu list, select Beam Pockets to Floor Plan. Then select the wall to where the macro needs to be placed. A dialog then appears that shows the properties of the beam pocket. The materials for the beam pocket's king and jam pieces were copied from the selected wall. You can continue to use those materials or click on the select button to choose another material. Some typical libraries to select from are S sections for standard stud shapes, T sections include track shapes, HSS underscore RECT library contains sizes for standard tube shapes. And there is a steel library with wide flange structural steel shapes. You can change the materials separately for the kings and the jams. You can set the orientation for the kings and the jams. the quantity of kings and jams, as well as the height of the jam studs. The king stud configuration has choices for left side king, right side king, or kings on both sides. You can add a label that shows up on the floor plan when the wall is panelized. I'll call this BP-1. Once the properties are set, you can save them as presets that can be loaded as needed. When done, click OK to accept. Then select the wall. The macro is automatically now constrained to the wall and can be placed the same way as doors and windows. In this case, I'm going to line up this beam pocket with the center of this wall by snapping to the center line. More can be placed as needed, and when done, press Escape to quit. Placing the extra studs macro works the same way. Go back to the panel macros function and select extra studs to floor plan. Select the wall. The default materials are set from the wall. And for this case, I'll change the number of studs to two. I'll use the label XS-2. Leave the other properties as is. Click OK, select the wall, zoom in a bit, and in this case, the extra studs will be lined up with this wall. Click to locate, escape to quit, zoom back out, and proceed to place the wind bracing macro. From the panel macros function, select wind braces to floor plan. Select the wall, and now the wind brace properties appear. The wind bracing macro allows us to add diagonal bracing to the wall. Within here, we can specify the overall length of the bracing along the horizontal direction. The bracing material, 
Here is a 3 inch flat strap. Trimming defines how the bracing will be trimmed to the end studs. Whether it's none and the bracing is square cut, trimmed to the edge of the end studs, or center of the end studs, or to the top and bottom tracks. You can select if you're using an X brace or just a single diagonal strap in the forward or reverse direction, and whether the bracing will be added to just one side of the wall or to both. Here you can specify the end studs material, orientation, and the number of end studs. Here's a checkbox for adding gusset plates to the corners, and a checkbox for if you want to cap your end studs with tracks. Click OK, select the wall, then locate the macro, and press Escape to end the function. Another type of framing macro is the panel break. This allows us to locate exactly where we want a panel to break. I'll select panel break, then a wall, and in this case for the location, I'll zoom here and measure six feet from this wall center. I'll do that by pressing Q, move in the desired direction, then type six feet, enter, and escape to end the function, and zoom back out. The panel break with gap works the same way, except it adds a space in between the panels. This is good to use if you have a structural column that needs to fit in between the panels. You can specify the gap width, then select the wall and locations as with the other framing macros, press confirm to select another wall, and escape to end. Another nice feature of the framing macros is that they can be copied from floor to floor so that the assemblies will be lined up. And also, double clicking on the framing macro will bring up the properties and allow changes to be made without having to delete and reinsert them. Press Ctrl S to save the project.